All right, we're going to go over two more ascending tracks. Um, they're both pretty simple. They differ from the cunatus and the grassless in a couple ways. One of the ways that they are similar to the grassless and the cunatus is that they both have three neurons in the full pathway. We're going to be dealing with the anterior and the lateral spinothalamix not to be confused with the lateral cortical spinal. We'll deal with how to differentiate uh, when we talk more about that one. First off, the anterior spinothalamic. What does it deal with? Anterior, shortened to ant. If you've ever had an ant crawl on your arm, it's a gross feeling. They crawl along your hair. What are you feeling? You're feeling light touch because when it's on there you barely feel them and as soon as you do it's gross. So the anterior spinothalamic is dealing with light touch and pressure which you remember by thinking of this little ant. The anterior spinothalamic because you've got to be able to feel light touch and pressure in your entire system. So first we got the cell body outside the CNS just like the cuneus and grassus differs in that there's a synapse right away oftentimes um, with these tracks that travel in the white matter there's a little pit stop in the gray matter I'd like to think of the gray matter gray matter just as a little garage a quick little change there so it comes comes in the anterior spinothalamic and there's a synapse right away now if you look back into page 64 of your little book you'll see that rex ad lamina 3 and 4 rex lamina 3 and 4 deal with touch and pressure so it's that's why in my head that's why they synapse together rex lamina is this little garage that deals with pain and or deals with touch and pressure and the anterior spinothalamic also deals with that so it makes sense that they associate together we don't differentiate so far on 3 and 4 so it's just in rex lamina 3 and 4 now, what makes this one kind of lazy, I think it's this one, even though it's the opposite of an ant, comes up and it crosses over the spinal cord very gradually, over a couple cord levels. Travels up along the outside, and this second neuron on the pathway is real boring. There's not any information, we don't need to remember that it goes through the medial lemniscus, nothing like that. It's very boring. So other than this little synapse right here, in let's see, synapse in rex, lamina, three and four, we don't have to remember a whole lot, right until it gets to the VPL of the thalamus, once again, little synapse right there, third neuron in the pathway, goes from the thalamus over to the postcentral gyrus. That's it, real simple, nobody has much of a hard time with that one, I don't think. Next, we've got the lateral spinothalamic. Um, I think I've heard a few people get confused between this one and the corticospinal, um, because there's a lateral corticospinal. Um, if there's any confusion, any of the sensory or ascending tracts have this spino first, because that's where it starts. Starts in the, sp in the spinal cord, goes up to the thalamus whereas the corticospinal starts in the cortex and goes down to the spine. So if you're confused, you see spinothalamic sitting there, you don't know whether it's a feeling or whether it's a, a motor neuron or motor pathway, just think of, just start with spinal, you know, that starts in the spinal cord. Um, it is very, very similar to the anterior cell body on the outside, comes in, quick little synapse, Synapse is in a slightly different place because we're no longer dealing with light touch and pressure. The lateral spinothalamic is dealing with pain and temperature. Lateral pain. For some reason, those two words make sense to me. Lat pain. They go together. Lateral spinothalamic deals with pain and temperature feeling. So the second one, synapse is in Rex and Lamina 2. Go back to page 64. 65 or whatever it is, 
and you'll see that rex lambda 2 is associated with that. So it stops in the rex lambda garage. Now that one, because pain doesn't have any patience. When it hits, it hits, and that's what it does. It crosses over immediately. It doesn't have any patience to take its time crossing over. It does it right away. Travels up the spinal cord, um, close to the anterior spinal thalamic, but a little bit different. Comes up, synapses on the thalamus, the VPL of the thalamus, same thing as the other one. Then we have our third neuron going from here, post-central. Nothing real special about these. Know that both the anterior and lateral spinal thalamic deal with their associated senses in the whole spinal cord. So anterior spinal thalamic deals with pain and and or uh, anterior spinal thalamic deals with light touch and pressure in the whole cord and the lateral spinal thalamic deals with pain and temperature in the whole spinal cord. And other than that, I guess well I guess we should show you in the cross section where they both are and then we'll talk about which neuron is considered the tract. Um, we have the lateral spinal thalamic right here and we have the anterior spinal thalamic right here. So in my head they both look a little bit like the thalamus in the diagrams, that's how I'm associating them together. And anterior obviously a little bit more to the front, lateral a little bit more to the side. Now the second neuron here, it happens to be in both of them the longest one um, and the one that takes up most of the spinal cord that is considered the tract for both of these the whole thing is the pathway this middle section here this middle neuron that is considered the tract and that's the anterior and lateral spinothalamic pathways